Hi, and welcome to the Empower Together podcast. I'm your host, Esri Parker, and I am so excited to have with me today my friend, Lisa Alexander. Lisa is amazing. She is a storyteller and a filmmaker, but she is so much more than that. Um, I've known Lisa for a long time, and so I have. Uh, we have been to Capitol Hill and lobbied trafficking legislation. She has written books. Um, she has her own podcast, This Woman Knows. Um, she has a book by that same name. Uh, she is, so she, she does, um, like urban farming. She does, <laughs> she does so much stuff. Like Lisa does all this stuff and it's so cool. So I'm really excited to have her on the show today to uh, talk about just all the exciting things that she has going on and the journey that she's been through. Oh, and her, and her new movie, the new movie that she's going to be putting out, which I'm very excited. Um, my father, the queen, just, I can't wait to see it. So Lisa, thank you for being here. Desiree, it's an honor. Thank you so much for having me. And we do go back a long way. I have video. I have it. Remember the video vlog of us? I have that's yep. still out there for the world to see. Yes. It's still out there. It is. That was years ago. Golly. Yeah. So we do. Yeah. We go back a ways. And so I'm that's I'm so excited to have some like somebody that I know I've known for over years on the show. So happy to be here. Very exciting. Good. So tell us like what's uh, I know you just recently was the 10 year anniversary of your book. Yes. That, so that was exciting. That actually caught me by surprise. I, <laughs> Facebook, you know, is good for sending you memories. And mm -hmm. that one came up and it's like, oh my God, it's been 10 years since I wrote that book. And so much happened because of that book, being obedient, writing that book, even, mm -hmm. even though it's not a complete work. And by that, I mean that my experience had only taken me that so far. So I wrote what I knew, right? Now mm -hmm. the sequel that I will write, <laughs> that yes. will, yes. Because a lot has have, happened in 10 years. Oh my goodness. So much has happened in 10 years, but this woman knows grew, it grew in from, it went from a book to a, to a blog post. And then we went to a TV show, a magazine, done all the things. And now we're back at, we're doing a podcast and just amazed at the entire journey. And I'm so grateful for saying yes, being obedient and doing, doing it because I, there are people that I would have never met. You know, there are experiences I probably wouldn't have had, had I not been obedient and wrote the book. And so I think the subs subsequent book that came from that was go ahead and put it out there. Just put it out there. It doesn't have to be perfect because I know that particularly females, we struggle from, some of us struggle with everything having to be perfect. So you have that yes. analysis by perfection, perfectionism usually spurs paralysis. And so you mm -hmm. put it out there, you do it with your knees shaking, you put it out there. If there's a mistake there, there's this wonderful thing called edit. And I love, so video is a really cool product because you can upload yes. a video and if you need to change it, you can replace the video. Can't do it on YouTube, which kind of oh, sucks. I love it. But on Vimeo, yeah. you can absolutely replace oh. your video. So it's I it's, love that. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's mm. okay. It's like if it's not perfect, that's okay. That's okay. It was your best oh, work at that, that moment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that, and that's yeah, that's the thing. That that was one of my dad's sayings, like you do your the, the best you can with what you have in the moment. Yes. That part. And that's always how we have to move forward. But you're right, that perfectionism creates paralysis. Um, it really does. And so often um, we feel like the time is not right. I don't have everything I need. I don't um, present perfectly. I don't, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And it uh, just stops us from doing so many things. Um, Absolutely. And when we could be doing... Um, at least B plus work. I had another, you know, a consultant that I worked with that was like, put, you know, when it's B plus rep level, mm -hmm. put it out, you know, put it out because there's That's always revisions true. that can be made later. There's, you know, but when you get it to where you feel like it is B plus ready, go. Go. Why not? It's, it's, Absolutely. It's, yeah. 
it's good. It's that that means it's better than average and it's good enough. <laughs> it needs to you need to run with it and you can tweak with it, tweak along the way. So, yeah, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So tell me about what what's going on with um, the podcast is relatively new. And yes. uh, the movie I know you've been working on for a while now, and I just yes. what little the clips that I've seen and all the promotion for it is just is so exciting. Thank I just, you. Thank I, you. I really can't wait to 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 see that. So the film is it's I guess my part of my life's work and my passion project, and I'm so mm -hmm. happy to be able to bring it to everyone. So the story is My Father the Queen. It's a, it's a black daughter story of growing up with a gay closeted father. And so because the father couldn't get what he needed or live authentically, he in turn couldn't parent and give his daughter what she needed. So there's trauma on both ends. And so we see how daddy issues kind of weave its way through her entire life. And I've been telling everyone what I know is that daddy, daddy issues they have no gender. So no, <laughs> they, they no. really don't. And so there's a quote that says that a father is a son's first hero and a daughter's first love. Yes. And I add to that until he's not able to, or if he can't fulfill that role. So what happens to those kiddos, you know, who yeah. don't have that father or that male energy. And so this film is a look at what happens yeah can you go through can 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 you be whole can you be healed can your family be put back together and so the film it's loosely based on my life so i can mm -hmm. definitely speak to daddy issues and mm -hmm. how they show up and how you can heal from them so that's the film uh the premise of the film and i'm so excited because we're going to be filming in chicago we've got um a stellar award-winning choir who has signed mm -hmm. on to the uh, project because music is so important in films. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It makes people... the movie. Absolutely. It really, the soundtrack makes the movie. Indeed. And so, you... so with indie films, we have micro budgets, right? We've got no. small yes. budgets, we have low budgets. And so usually music is the last thing that gets added or mm -hmm. doesn't get added at all. At and all. it's, the, it's at, the, at the end of the budget. It's at the, it's, 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 it's what's left. <laughs> no, I then, get it. Then you're going it's what's through, left. Then you're going through stock houses to see what you can and find. Public and, domain. And, and what's all, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And so yes. to have them sign on and give us access to their current um, repertoire. So they just released a new like CD. That. And so we get to work with them, use their music. We only not only get to use their music, we get to use their choir and their musicians. And so this just works That's out perfectly awesome. because church does play a role in black black life, black, black family life. Church is a, it was a pretty mm -hmm. big deal. And so we yeah, had to have absolutely. that component in the film. And I wanted it to be authentic as possible. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a PK church kid, so I I, I know all the inner workings <laughs> of, of the black church. And you know how the church works. I yes. know how this works. And so I wanted to absolutely present something that was very realistic and sounded right. Mm -hmm. And so, again, to have this amazing choir say yes and join us. Just oh, really I love that. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. I love that. And I love that you're shooting in Chicago. Chicago is one of my favorite cities. Um, I don't know why, like, I mean, it's a huge city. It's, I, I grew up in Houston, so it's not like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mesmerized by the big city thing. It's just, I just love Chicago for some reason. There's just something about it. Um, Lo we loved it. That when I we went, abs we fell in love. If yeah. I couldn't, if it weren't for the snow. The, mm, yeah. I don't know if I'd have loved it as much if I'd been there in the winter. I've been there in mostly mm -hmm. spring, summer months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I'm out of change my mind if it had been January. <laughs> yeah, if I'm having to dig myself out of snow, that's going to be a love affair yes. that does not last. I am a but... southern I am a southern girl. So <laughs> so that might change. But um but it's amazing that, you know, it's got a great backdrop. Um, mm. you know, it's a beautiful city and it's wonderful that you've got um sign on from such um 
you know, for such a good musical score uh, so Absolutely. early on in the project. Uh, right. And so funding um, is needed. Uh, so yes. if you want, if you want to tell people where they can uh, fund you, please feel free. <laughs> Ab absolutely. We are definitely um, crowdfunding. And then we know that this type of film, so we could, <laughs> my managing producer or producing partner, her name is Catherine Hatam and Catherine is amazing. And I'm so mm -hmm. happy that she's part of, of this team. And she said, yes. So any, everybody that said yes so far, I'm grateful for this is such a huge thing, right? And people are willing yes. to sign their names and their lives and as you know, time and space for this project. You know, they read the script and they go in. And I'm like, okay, yeah. good. You know, this is good. thank you. I much appreciate yes. it. And so Catherine, she says, Lisa, we can do this film for five hundred thousand dollars. We don't want to do it for five hundred thousand dollars that's not the really the film we want to make right and so yeah. we're looking at budgets of upwards between two and maybe five million dollars that would allow yeah. us to bring in a-list talent that we could yeah. do even more musically because the production budget you know that pretty much doesn't doesn't change it's the 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 extras if you will the yes, the post-production the post-production that yeah. really brings it to life and you know tells this amazing story and so part mm -hmm. of storytelling is making sure that i immerse the audience in this world that we're creating mm -hmm. you know and i don't want anything pulling them out like bad audio bad audio will kill a film oh uh, yes yes I have seen some Netflix movies. I saw recently a movie that um, it had virtually no soundtrack. Um, and I was like, we're sitting here in silence. And, so, and, and I think it might have been part of the point of the movie to make you uncomfortable. Oh, but okay. I didn't enjoy, it wasn't something that I personally enjoyed. Right. Um, and I was like, I feel very awkward. <laughs> I'm at home in my own house and I'm feeling I'm awkward. House. I'm like, this is awkward watching this movie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's yeah, the, the soundtrack. So we can, um, we, we, we are crowdfunding. I think it's still running. It's www.fundmyfatherthequeen.com. Okay. Well, I'll put and that in the, I'll put that link in the, in the notes. Uh, thank you so much. So we are accepting and then we're, of course, taking meetings, meeting with different people. It's going to take, mm -hmm some people who see vision or who understand vision yeah. and who are passionate about this kind of story because it is yeah it is lgbtq themed so a lot of people are already like uh, yeah i can you know, see where there'd be some standoffishness there, in, there, in some mainstream society there's or, some you know, groups but at the same time Absolutely. like you said it's also um father issues and what stems from that, and that reaches into all communities. I mean, Absolutely. you and I met, of course, when, when I was working in uh, with victims of trafficking, survivors of trafficking. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that you see with these unhealed fathers, <laughs> father issues. You know, you talk about what comes from um, these voids yeah. uh, in parenting, these voids from a, um, an absent uh father figure of, of an absent male energy and absent male presence yes. in the life um you know that's where traffickers come in and fill those voids yeah. uh, and so so that's I, I don't see how that can be divisive at all quite honestly <laughs> um, so yeah uh so i think that's something that anybody could support right um, regardless and the movie know. actually looks into his trauma a little bit because i mm -hmm. didn't want him to be portrayed as this horrible person you know sure. and so we everybody has a story even our parents have stories right everybody has a story we're everybody. all everybody we're all dealing with something and so what i would hope is that by the end of the film you have a better understanding so i didn't make him the villain per se I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to do that, you know, to him, mm -hmm. but I wanted people to understand because I think if we can understand, then we can give grace and we can give compassion. Yes. And it may not mean that your forgiveness may not mean re reuniting, you know, no. if you are estranged, 
but it may be a source of healing where it's like, okay, I understand and I can give this grace and that will allow me to go ahead and heal and come to Mm -hmm. be my, my best self, you know, I can love them from where they are, you know, give and and it'd be okay. Yes. And I think that's a really good point is, um, and, and something that in trauma work is, is, um, hopefully taught correctly that mm-hmm. um, forgiveness or reconciliation forgiveness and reconciliation are not the same thing no. um, you can move on from a from a you can decide that you have accepted or you have forgiven or whatever it is your whoever it is that hurts you that does not mean you introduce them back into your life that does not mean you bring them back in and allow them to hurt you again, um, no matter what the circumstance is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can, it doesn't involve the other person at all. (laughs) You know, quite honestly, it's, it's for you personally. So, um, and, and allowing people to see his trauma uh, because Mm -hmm. we all have trauma, you know, and that's one of the things that, that, um, I like to tell people or, you know, remind people. And when I'm talking to leaders and, and um, employers and stuff like that is everybody has trauma. Mm -hmm. It looks different. It, it may manifest different. It may be not something you would consider traumatic. Um, You know, it may be something that, that didn't, wouldn't traumatize you, but it traumatizes somebody else. We all have that. Um, And so we need to understand where people are coming from um, and how that informs their actions and behaviors. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I wanted, what else I want for the film is it to just humanize black bodies, Mm -hmm. regardless, female, male, everything in between humanize black bodies and our experiences and so Mm -hmm. i'm asking a lot of this film but from what what people have told me people that read the script they absolutely love it because it is layered and my the characters are complex and Mm -hmm. because we are i mean real life is complicated and it's messy and it's it's got all these components to it and so that's that's my hope for the film that that people walk away and they can see themselves, even though this is a black family being portrayed that, because another thing I know is that dysfunction doesn't know a color either. Oh no. Dysfunction doesn't. <laughs> Absolutely not. doesn't know a color either. So you can definitely, Absolutely not. you know, just find a space in here and, and mm-hmm. just witness, because I think we all have something that we need to be healed from and what mm-hmm. that journey can look like. I love that. The, the part of that purpose, that humanizing black bodies, mm-hmm. um, because we see, over the years we've seen, mm. well, recent years, even we've seen so much dehumanization um, with, you know, brutality and, and deaths and stuff like that, that um, I, I, I know I don't have to tell you. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but that, uh, that, that people don't, um, that obviously isn't taken seriously enough because it keeps happening. So yeah, that part. so to, to humanize, um, and to really bring forward the um, complexity mm-hmm. of, of an experience that's different than maybe mine or somebody else's, um, but in the but in another way, the same. That yes, it's like something something is eerily familiar, you know, yeah. about this. It's like why why does why why am I connecting with this? You know, this mm-hmm. isn't necessarily my experience, but some I'm I'm connected. Some something about this feels the humanity very of it that part yes, yeah ma'am. the yes, humanity ma'am. of it is very connecting yeah mm-hmm. absolutely that's awesome that's great i'm excited about that i am too so, yes I so what else love for it yeah. to come, i would love for it to come out next year i would love be, to be able to start production before the snow falls or either by the time the snow oh. melts in yes. chicago so right? somewhere in there somewhere, somewhere in, there. in there before it falls okay, and well, be, yeah after it melts and then have be it come out. For, Praying yes. for big funding. Somebody knows somebody. Yes. And you just never Absolutely. know. Absolutely. And you a, just couple, never or a couple of somebodies or something. I want to back it. So absolutely definitely oh, I'm, I'm excited about that and we'll definitely be praying for that. So um okay. so yeah, so tell me a little bit about what else you're working on. Um like I said, you, you know, your podcast, um 
a second book or i mean the next book i don't say the other but the, the one that you the 10 year one was your second book your <laughs> your next book so, all of the things so i i i and i did a look back over those 10 years of all the things that i've done and some people would would think that perhaps i didn't know what i was doing part of that might be true but it was this journey that kind of weaved its way and led me to here. So every experience that I had got me here and everything that I've learned, everything that I've experienced mm -hmm. has prepared me for this particular moment. So yes. I'm a firm believer in that nothing gets wasted. Absolutely mm -hmm. nothing gets wasted. This woman knows.com is 10 years old. It has been a blog. It has been a magazine. It has been, um, we tried TV for a spell, but the site still stayed there. And I, I wouldn't take it down. We've had contributors. We've had some amazing women be contributors. And so their stories, everything is still there for you to see. I even did a short film called She Said What? Mm -hmm. that's, still, that's still there as well. And so to now to be able to come back and revive thiswomanknows.com again, this time in the form of a podcast and it's again, mm -hmm. nothing gets wasted. And no. I did an interview the other day and this woman went digging through the website, found an article in the magazine that I had clearly forgotten that I had written <laughs> clearly. And she wants to talk about the article and I said, like, can you give me a moment? I need to go back and refresh yeah. myself with the content. Yeah. Yes. What article was <laughs> Yes, article was I get again? it. And so, you know, the content, thankfully, it's evergreen. And when you're writing from, mm -hmm. you know, writing on purpose and bigger than yourself with the intent to always help and to heal and help another woman, mm -hmm. you know, grow. Then it's, that it's writing, not dated. It's not dated. It wasn't dated mm -hmm. at all. And so we were able to have this conversation about the purity culture and accepting your body and how do you begin to even deconstruct some of that teaching or those thoughts so that you can be a whole person and enjoy yeah. aspects of your life that you might have been taught were evil and sinful. And that's not different than that. That's no different today than it was when I was a kid. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, that's, like that's a, that's a conversation that is just as relevant today it is. Um, as it was when I was raising my girls, mm -hmm. as when, you know, I was being raised and yeah i guarantee you when my mom was being raised um, oh absolutely for sure then. so for sure you know it's um so it's great that that stuff you know that you didn't take any of that stuff down because i know a lot of times people refresh yes. their websites and they redo them and they take stuff down and they um want to put up stuff that's more current and and things like that and um, i think it's great that you leave that on there it um, is all there because it you never know there. what's going to be helpful to somebody Absolutely. you know that uh, an article you wrote that long ago you know would resonate with somebody absolutely um, and, so, and spark a new conversation who knew so who yeah knew? so I, so again put it out there mm -hmm. was the site now the site has had many iterations of what oh, it, yeah what it looks like so that's changed I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but the content <laughs> has remained yes. The same. And there is a particular, because of course you have Google Analytics and you're always checking to see how people find oh, you yes. and come to the site, right? And so mm -hmm. there's this one article, at least five times a week, somebody search, does a search and they come to it and it's like how to, it's, it's about forgiveness and befriending the other woman. When I tell you, and, and it's not even my article, another um, beautiful spirit. Her name is uh, Petra. Petra wrote that. And mm -hmm. Petra, if you're listening, girl, your article, get that thing gets read on a regular. <laughs> on a regular. It's so funny. It's interesting, though, because I have um, I have a lot of papers that from when I was in grad school that I published to academia, mm. um, you know, that because that, a lot of, you know, students use it to find scholarly articles and i get emails constantly about um one or two articles that i wrote about like um uh community um healing and community and then one about uh, um, ethics in uh, you know working with trafficking victims and though i get constantly that people have cited that article 
those two, the, the, those two papers. And I'm like, so these things that, um, you know, that, yes, they were written several years ago, mm-hmm. but um, the point of them is not, you know, has not changed. You know, the, no. the, the value of healing and community is still the same. Mm-hmm. The importance of ethical treatment, you know, when working with victims of trauma is still still the valid. same. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's interesting um, when you make your content um, valuable, when you make it um, authentic and and real, it, it yeah. doesn't go away, you know. Still valid, still valid. So yeah. put it out there. Absolutely put that. it out there. Mm-hmm. I love that. So movie, podcast, what else are you working on? My garden. It's, Your it's, garden. Ca- it's called Alexander Farm and Orchard. And I realized that yes. that sounds much bigger than what's <laughs> actually in the backyard. Because this is the suburbs. Okay. This is this is out yes. North Houston suburbs. And it's a backyard that it started with two raised beds. And so now we are actually planting. We are amending soil and put up a fence. I love the picture, shape- though. Thank you. Like you're growing such like nice, nice stuff, you know, Thank you're you. growing real things. You know? The goal is to, <laughs> and I'm killing succulents over here. <laughs> so, it impresses me so much because oh, no. I okay. really have a dead aloe plant over here. <laughs> oh, my friend. Um, I I'll, know. I'm coming. I'll come over. We'll see what we can do. I'll so come over. Because oh. it's sad. But I love seeing your pictures, though. And I love Thank seeing like, the, the gardening and stuff like that. Because I'm like, oh, gosh, you know. And, that and I know has, it takes effort. Oh, my God. It takes effort. And that has been a journey. So I have failed more times than not. And I have to remember, I've been at this since 2013, 15, 2015. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. And so the garden yeah. has even changed and and i've grown with that because it, I, I again facebook will send me pictures and it's like oh that's when we just had two beds and we didn't know yes. what we were doing and wow look at there <laughs> and uh right. we're just growing a few herbs here and now you know now we're yeah we're gonna see what happens and so now we're 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 so much um more experienced and you know still still learning still or everything is organic in the backyard. And so, so me, I am, I tend to be a little bit, just a little impatient, just a little, I understand, just a I little. Understand. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm wanting, I want, I want more production. So I'm like, you know, if we didn't have these dogs, I would take every <laughs> single space in this backyard. I would take right. it off. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, it's like, no, we can't get rid of the dogs. It's like, that, that yeah. wouldn't be right. That just wouldn't yeah. be right. No, and no, so I'm, no, I'm joking. But... The dogs aren't going. They're, I know, but, not I, going know I, but I understand, but I have it because I have a giant of a dog out there too. Who, okay. you know, my, my backyard is, yeah, it's something. Yeah. <laughs> it's I like understand. the zoo out there. <laughs> okay. I get it. I get that. And so it's, it's been a lesson in pollinators and, you know, brick how things grow and um, pest and how to wow. rid them and learning how important good soil is. That's so important yes. because good soil plants growing in good soil, healthy I've soil yes. will repel. You don't get diseased plants, you know, and they're able to fight good. off pests. Okay. So it's been... Do you use like natural um, uh, pesticides or do you use... Um just regular pesticides. I haven't had to use anything this year. If I've seen squash That's bugs, awesome. it was me doing like this. I got you. And it's like, <laughs> like no, squashed I got up you. bugs. I squashed <laughs> the squash bugs. There um, you go. And then uh, there were a few times we had um, horn horn worms, which will okay absolutely destroy a tomato patch. So I was able to find really? both of the. Oh, those things are wicked. They are from, they are evil yeah. on many many levels. And so oh. I was able to, I only found two this season and pulled yeah. them off. And well, let's a just say mine, they, it was the birds that was getting at the tomatoes all the times, all, all I, the time. The birds were wanting to get the tomatoes. Yeah, we had that issue last year. And so, so here's what I learned. We put up because, so I, okay, let me sidestep. I believe that climate change is real because 
my garden tells me climate change is real. Yeah. It's too hot too soon. So last yeah. year we didn't grow anything. Triple digits in June. That's that's not normal. That no. is not normal. That was unexpected. As, very unexpected. So we didn't get we didn't get to harvest anything that because the and then we didn't have a, a shade cloth over our, mm -hmm. our product because we didn't have to, you know, in past years. And it's like, it was just fine. So by the time August came, you know, production was done. We weren't really thinking about planting for the fall just yet. So we could do the hundred degree weather and it was fine because the garden was resting at that point. Mm -hmm. But June, a hundred degrees in June last year, my tomato said, no, we are not. Right. Just no. no. The cucumber said, no, not, we're not, yeah. no, just no. And so this year I said, okay, I said, I bet, I said, my bet is that things will continue and we'll be in 100 degree weather again in June. And sure enough, we got those really high we temperatures did. again. Early. Early. And so this year we put up a, a canopy and put up shade cloth to protect okay. the veggies. And so we were okay. able to harvest, you know, get a harvest. It took longer this year for things to start growing. So now the okra is starting to produce. It's been in the ground okay. since April. Yeah. Since April. So we had this funky kind of weather going on. I don't know. But we, we the, the okra is finally growing. The tomatoes, um, they did what they were going to do. So I have a second second batch of tomatoes that we just put in. So they're about this big. So I get I to watch them. It. I have corn so growing. Cool to watch I, I, grow. enjoy, oh. I enjoy it. I do. Yeah. It, I didn't know that it would be so therapeutic. Therapeutic. So there's something very therapeutic about digging in the dirt and absolutely planting things and seeing them grow. It. And I, I, I love the concept. I've just never been able to. If we're killing succulents, I, we're, we, we have to talk <laughs> offline. I got, I got you. Bro. I got you. I know. Can't do it. <laughs> but yeah. So, so yeah. So, all right. Well, what else? Well, I will say that, um, I do love working with nonprofits. Like that's how you and I came together yep. is because I've always loved Absolutely. working with nonprofits because two things that I believe, and I know for sure that nonprofits have the ability, the stories of nonprofits have the ability to um, shift the culture and can redirect narratives. Right. And so mm -hmm. I believe that if you want to know, like if legislators and policymakers want to know mm -hmm. how something is impacting their constituents or how is it impacting the community and real people go talk mm -hmm. to the nonprofit leader who's working in that space because yep. they can tell you immediately what's happening with real people and so i believe yes. in definitely amplifying nonprofit stories making sure that they get told because nonprofits i believe have the ability to change mm -hmm. what's going on if enough of their stories are told so i am such an advocate of nonprofits doing good in the community. Yeah. The good, you know, the good ones. It's like there's good and yes. bad everywhere. They're, of course. It just is. Um, Definitely. But the, 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 the good nonprofits that are really doing the work and serving their community, I want to help amplify their stories. So that's, I did the documentaries. So I would, you know, I have clients that I do documentaries for and help amplify their that. stories. So these are, the, these are nonprofits that have a meager budget so that they can bring me in <laughs> to yes. produce these things because yes. they're not the most least expensive things to produce, but they are no. very um, cost effective or they're, 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 they have a good ROI. Yes. So being able to tell the story visually so that people mm -hmm. understand, because I believe in the power of storytelling. I believe, 100%. I believe in storytelling and that it can bring down these walls that we have up and it's like oh i don't believe in this and i don't believe in that and you know this is um whatever it is i don't think this is right but if you hear my story then yeah. and i t talk to you person to person or if you see this and you see people it may i think it can cause maybe just a little bit of a shift you know mm -hmm. to at least something moderate or that we can be become tolerant or we that create a sense of understanding. And so I love working with nonprofits, you know, with the, helping them tell their stories. And that can be through marketing. And that's all my career has been. So if you go back 10 years, I've always told stories. It just showed up differently. 
It was this yeah. woman knows. It was as a speaker. It's it was as a graphic designer. It was mm -hmm. all the things that I've done. It's all if you take it, it's all been storytelling in its many different forms. So no, I yeah. wasn't jumping around doing things and just you know doing things on a whim. It was very strategic, and yeah. each level of storytelling I learned something from and grew from it and again that's how it got me here so love working with my profits I love storytelling and that's for great and, and different versions of storytelling I mean there's there's you know the written word the visual art yes, the yes. um the movie aspect of Absolutely. it the um the sound you know the the yes the now the podcast Audible. version the audio yes. version you know so there's a million ways to tell story mm -hmm. um and so i think it's really important that you know like you said you weren't jumping around it was you know you were utilizing various methods of storytelling yes. um and um you know now have ex now have you have done all of them <laughs> Um, and uh, and have experience in that, so people can you know uh, feel confident that whatever story they have and however they might want to put it out, mm -hmm. um, you know that you would you would be able to interpret that story um, absolutely in a way in a way that's that's understandable and um, empathetic and um, you know will return on on whatever investment they make. Absolutely. One of the um, nonprofits that we did work for, they had, they they initially just asked us to do a promo video for them, something mm -hmm. that they could put on their website. No problem. And so part of my research is to see what your colleagues in similar work, let's see what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. my research showed that somewhere out there, there must be a template for nonprofit video because it all pretty much followed this same kind of yep. template. Well, look, that's so, <laughs> they so update them about every three years, and the, and I've I've been in them. I've okay. done them. Okay. Because so, you you know I was a nonprofit for mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Done so, the videos. So, so they're they're all kind of like the same. Whoever, whoever comes up with the format, every nonprofit follows suit, and, and they're all the same. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing with that. So I you know I'm checking for reach and so when i see that a video has only had 10 views in three years I'm going that's oh wow. that's ugly oh. yeah and that was probably the staff oh that exactly <laughs> that's like that's like my my, my staff my mama my, right you know. <laughs> right and it's like so did you get the return on investment from the video because it's still not um cheap to produce even those kind of oh. bring in a videographer and you know sit down and bring in the lights and have no, people. I mean, I, it's we would get good deals on them and you you know you're still talking you know two or three thousand dollars absolutely absolutely to, to produce a good decent quality video you know yes, three to three to five minute promo video that goes out and you play it maybe at your fundraiser um and you put it on your website mm -hmm. and you post it on your social media mm -hmm. um but um, if it doesn't really like if people aren't really pulled in by it, and yes. you're, not, you're not seeing the because um, I used to handle the social media for one of the mm -hmm. nonprofits I worked for. And so, you know, seeing it not get the reach or not get even the comments or the, wow. you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's like you want people to engage with it. Um, and because you can also see how long they watched it, yes, and see when that they, they didn't watch off. the whole mm -hmm. thing. They watched, you know, my mm -hmm. six-minute video got watched for a minute and eight seconds. Yes, you yes, know, and then they mm -hmm. stuck. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, it's really important. I'm so glad you know. I see this is a good <laughs> interview talking to somebody who is, can validate. <laughs> what i'm I've saying there. Yes. yes and then you know and now of course having my own podcast mm -hmm. um I, i'm i'm aware of this stuff you know I'm, i can look at it and be like okay how long are people watching it what yes. is engaging what is um uh going to reach people what yeah. how can i compare my analytics mm -hmm. um and see which things are reaching people which things are falling flat yes um because things do, you know everything is not a winner 
I, you know, no. right? <laughs> even right? Just, I, I'm there uh, every once in a while, you know, I'll put out a clunker <laughs> on it Facebook happens. or LinkedIn yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I'm like, who? Yeah, only 200 people looked at this, <laughs> you know, like, we only reached, and it's like, okay, yeah. well, we know now what to what doesn't work, absolutely. You know? And so, that's so, what I ended up telling my client, I said. I can do this video, what you're asking me to do, but I don't think you're going to see the return on your investment. I think it's going to be similar to what mm -hmm. these other organizations have experienced. I says, so I tell, I tell the ED executive director is like, do you trust me? She doesn't know me from a can of beans. Right. And she's like, mm -hmm. tell me what you got. So I propose that we do a doc for, do a documentary. Let's, mm -hmm. let's tell, let's let the people with lived experience, let them mm -hmm. tell this story. Don't yeah. necessarily need to hear yeah. from the executive director on how wonderful the yeah. organization is and yeah. that we save 2.2. Who cares? Yeah. Investors might care. Donors might care, but they can read that on uh, on your financial statements, right? On the say, report you, that you, you put you out. You put that on your annual report. Okay. And so what we did is we created this documentary, but not only did we do a documentary, we did, we added drama to it. So there's a scripted part to it to mm -hmm. bring you in. So this is how real it became for somebody. So we did the documentary. It's a short, so it's under 30 minutes. Sure. So per perfect. We got, you know, got the people to say what they needed to say, we told this incredible story. So I put the story out and I had someone. So the story is about, I got the story is about young people who have been in both systems, juvenile detention mm -hmm. and foster care to the most oh, broken that population. Systems. Well, Yep. Two of the most broken systems you could ever find yourself in, right? I, you know, I, I could go on for days. <laughs> we could yes. really have conversations, couldn't we? Oh yeah. Man, yeah. okay. So I'm I'm learning so much about this population just by conducting the interviews, talking to the people with lived experience, talking to the people mm -hmm. who've worked in these spaces. So we'd mm -hmm. actually talk to a former corrections officer, a juvenile detention officer. Okay. So yeah. just the things that they saw. Yes. Yes. I mean, I was okay. program director at an intense plus RTC. Okay. So, so. kids that had been in, a lot of them had been in juvenile justice, um, had, and come to us. And then of course they were in foster care because mm, they were in an RTC right. and they had all been trafficked. So they were high level trauma, mm. high level discipline issues, high level mental health issues. Yes. Um, so yes, it is. Yeah. The so, system fails, fails, fails. Oh my word. And so you actually hear that from people now from young, from people with lived experience on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so the opening of it is a courtroom scene. That's how we opened the documentary with a courtroom scene. And so there's, I won't give it away. You can Google just one. I think it's out there where you can see it. Okay. I think it's, I think it's out there in the world. Um, if not, you can email me and I'll send it to you. <laughs> send you the link. Absolutely. Yeah. Send me so, the link and I'll put it in, in the comments. <laughs> so the scene opens and you don't, <laughs> at the end, you're not expecting what you see at the end. You're like, did I just see what I saw? And is this real? And it is very real. So I, I put the I put the doc out and of um, someone on LinkedIn, he works with ex offenders. Mm -hmm. He has a recidivism program, that kind of thing. He said he watched that intro. And he was like, that thing was so real. He was having flashbacks. It was like it was like my own sentencing. It's like, okay, we have done some good writing and a good piece of good. We've done some good. I, work mean, here. I mean, sad, but good. Right? But yes. But that's the yeah. power of story when you can tell that kind of story. And so they benefited greatly from that documentary. Yes. So they got the attention of um, local representatives. Um, they were able to capitalize on that documentary. They had town hall meetings, you know, they would mm -hmm. put it out and there was just so many things that could be done with that piece of content. You could break it up yeah. and just show this part and break it up and just show That's this what you need part to be able to do. Yes. And how, yeah. you know, engage conversation. And so, and I love yeah. that the work has inspired another um, generation of filmmakers because even people within the organization, you know, they saw that and they're like, okay, well we can tell a story. And so it's, it's yes. a beautiful thing. So. That's awesome. 
I'm yeah. definitely, yeah, definitely send me that link because I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the notes Absolutely. Um, for the podcast so other people can find it too. But I definitely want to see that um, because, yeah, I mean, I've accompanied many people on court, you know, in, in court and yeah. um, and working with, you know, high need spo- uh, foster kids and, and just dealing with the whole juvenile justice thing. It's just um, that and was I a did learning that towards experience. the end. Yeah. And I, and that was towards the end of my time in nonprofit. I mean, that was because, you know, I worked with adult trafficking survivors yes. for years and years and it wasn't but for the last several years while, up until this past March um, that mm-hmm. I was working with um, children. Yeah. So it and was, that's where um, I did my volunteer work. I did yes. my volunteer work with um, <sighs> yeah. the organization and yes, brutal so i always find myself entrenched in these places where stories can be told and so and and it's i think it is my responsibility you know if i have this gift and this ability then it is my job to make sure to tell a a good story to make sure that they get amplified so i've um honed my communication yes because a lot of people don't know and then they don't and then they some people, they even when they see statistics or something like that, they still don't believe it. It's not my it's husband. Not. My husband was showing this to me something on social media just yesterday about um, some person who was, uh, you know, child trafficking is a, is a myth. If you're doing audio, I mean, I know you can't see my mind and Lisa's faces, but as people who have worked in, like, oh who my. have seen, seen this happening like that just slapped me across the face like gut punched me and i was like how dare oh my how dare somebody even print that statement onto their social media like those that's the kind of people that say stuff like the holocaust didn't happen i'm like how how i can't i can't i can't <laughs> you know, like, I just, look i to say Look, I, I, I <laughs> I've met the children. I've I've met the kiddos. I've, I've met the young women. I've picked them up from their from their circumstances. Okay, you know, like I know, I've sat with them, you know, and, and I'm like, and you're gonna tell, you're gonna actually have the audacity. Was it a male? Um, I think it was. Um, <laughs> yes, but the audacity to say that this is a myth, so you know, if, if- and. If we keep saying something doesn't doesn't exist, will that make it go away or make it any less true? Because what I'm finding yeah. is that if I keep repeating a lie, that somehow maybe the lie then becomes it gets embedded and becomes the truth. And so, I, I, is, is, is this what we're going for? Is that is I that guess where we're headed? It becomes true in your mind. I mean, if you repeat a lie to yourself often enough, you, it becomes your truth. And so, I think I, I honestly, I do think people do that. Tell that to the young women and the young boys and the men and the boys because it's the, not yeah. just girls. Oh, I nope. have got on a soapbox. Let me. Oh, I know. Blood pressure has. Let me well, take no. a deep breath. <laughs> my watch is going to start telling me that my heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I get on it like that, my yeah. watch will be like mm, heart rate. <laughs> yeah, because it's it is but it yeah. is real and we and again I believe that by telling keep telling these stories keep telling mm-hmm. them make sure that they get amplified. And so make sure that the good stories get amplified and then they reach your Congress people and your senators and make sure that they reach policymakers and insurance yeah. companies and yes. all the things. Make sure that Mental these health stories have and pharmaceutical companies oh, and all the, ugh, yeah. the lobbyers and, you know, all, all this oh. stuff that make it. Yeah. God bless. Make lobbyists. it unavoidable. Yeah. I uh, just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I know <laughs> that I will continue to do what I do and just be, yeah. I, because I believe in the power of these stories. And so that's why yes. I'm telling my father, the queen, maybe I love it. Maybe, maybe it will be okay to be a rainbow child and it'd be okay. And you won't have be targeted by certain sure states so. and, you know, legislation. Maybe, maybe it'll sure be, so. be okay. One yeah. Day. And you won't have to worry about your kids. Um, you know, oh, that that's, you know, every time they walked out the door, if, if, if you know, if, if that was their fate. So I, yeah, so I am committed, I am committed 
to telling these kinds of stories. So um, mm -hmm. somebody asked me, it's like, what other kinds of films were you produce? I, I, there's a comedy I may do with um, somebody that I know, but everything is, is purposeful for me. And yeah. so I under, so being a business person, I understand two things. So being a, being a business person and then being somebody that has purpose, it depends. Okay. So it depends on who's asking me the question. If you're asking me, what's the most important thing about this film? The most important thing to me about this film is making sure that um, people can see themselves, that healing can happen yeah. and that you maybe consider something in a way that you hadn't considered before. So if yeah. this was Forbes asking me what's the most important thing, it's like, oh, that this movie is profitable and that we can offer an ROI to our investors, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. Both There's... things are mutually mm -hmm. true. Both things. They are. But Both yes, things are mutually it, true. Absolutely. You have to know the audience that you're speaking with. Absolutely. But, but and yeah. to any investors out there that might be listening, I do want you to get a return on your finances. It's like so 100%. <laughs> like, so invest so that it can be well made. After that um, part. And then you will get more money back on Absolutely. the back end. Absolutely. So, yes. So there will be a link in uh, the notes of the podcast where you can donate money. Um, and so please consider funding it. I think it's going to be great. Um, if you look at Lisa's website, um, this woman knows, uh, dot com, right. Yes. And, um, you know, you'll see information about it. You'll see the stills from it, the, um, you know, the promotion that's been done so far mm -hmm. um, and information about it. And I think um, you would find it a really worthwhile investment. Absolutely. So, we even have sponsorships available. So if you wanted to donate your frequent flyer miles so that we can get our crew to Houston, from Houston to Chicago, there are multiple ways to give to this campaign. I love it. Yeah, because there, there are. I mean, there are all kinds of things that can be donated. So, yeah, sponsorships, Absolutely. financials, money, money. 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 <laughs> money. Money. I love money. you, Desiree. <laughs> it's so good to see you. <laughs> but yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to tell people to, where they can find you, how they can help you? Sure. So you can go to Lisa in Alexander.com. There are about 2.6 billion Lisa Alexanders on the planet. Right. So you, I am differentiated by the letter N is in Nancy. So Lisa in Alexander.com. That'll okay. lead you to my father, the queen. That'll lead you to this woman knows. It'll lead you to all the things. So that's like my umbrella site. And you can, I'm so, on social media on all the things. I'll be coming off Twitter soon. Um, but in the meantime, you can find me everywhere at Lisa in Alexander. And I'm happy to communicate and talk to you, answer questions. Hit me up in my DMs. I, I actually read those for the time yes. being. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> me too, for now. And unless they, you know. For now. Unless uh, they're, you know, spammy or mm -hmm. weird. So, <laughs> but yes, yeah, follow Lisa. Um, she, you know, posts great information. She posts good posts. She posts nice pictures of her garden. So, yes. <laughs> they're worth looking at. So. Come see the zucchini. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, Lisa. I'm so glad to talk to you and so glad that um, we could have this time to talk about all the things you're working on and the fun stuff you're doing and great work that's going on. And um, yeah, and I'll have all her links in, in, in our in our notes. So thank you, you so can find much. Lisa I appreciate and follow it. her and hopefully give her money. <laughs> I promise I love it. you. Yes, I promise I love you. Thank you. You know I used to host, you know I used to host fundraisers for so I just keep saying it. Give We're gonna have to me. bring you in. Yes, thank you. <laughs> used to be part of a job. So but uh, yeah, so thank you so much for being here, everybody. Thank you for watching. Um, again, my name is Desiree Parker and this is the Empower Together podcast. Thank you.